Hello, everyone. Welcome to Arbitrage Trade. I am Royce Wells, and it is February 25th, 2024. Today's seminar's title is How Many Lumps Do You Want? Well, after uh, the October 31st sell signal that we got on our um, four hour time frame, um, shortly thereafter, going into the month of November, we got a lot of lumps. So basically, November 1st, it came out swinging and up, up, up it went. Well, the good news is if you were able to catch it, it was sitting on two very important support lines that it needed to cross underneath the yellow to begin a bear market. So it managed to stay just above that and pull up hard to give us over a 20% rally from that green arrow all the way to where we are now, just about 19, 20%. Um, so that was a very nice catch for those who may have caught it since uh, November the 1st. That's about a four month ride and 20% return. Not bad, four and a half percent or four or five percent per month. Once again, not bad. But how long can we go before things absolutely must correct? Well, looking at our dashboard indicator, um, this is S&P 500, in case you were wondering what you were looking at. Uh, looking at our dashboard, I'm going to actually bring this guy, bring get rid of the candles for just a second and make the dashboard a little bit bigger so that way we can see just a little bit more. So I'm going to make it large, and it should make our numbers on this uh, dashboard extremely large, which means allows everyone to be able to see them. So now it's redrawing, and there we have it. Okay, so looking at the S&P 500, let's look at it um, um, from a band standpoint. Looking at our arbitrage band, uh, looks like the compass line is above the RSI line. That's why uh, this square is green. The same is true for our arbitrage, novice, intermediate, advanced, apocalypse, and even automation is saying, hey, there's support right here at 482. So if we break under 482, things could change. But until then, things may stay the same. However, um, if you've ever used our indicators before, we have to watch out to make sure that our RSI lines, in this case, um, it's our red line in this chart down here, doesn't make it up into our danger zone, which is the dark blue or teal that we see up here that's bluish, tealish, gray. Anytime that does happen, it basically turns on these numbers. And when these numbers are on, that means the buy is in danger, which means the candles have gotten too far away from that mean line, which means ultimately for us to continue on this way, we have to make sure that we get back down to 489 at some point and to satisfy the even bigger band, which is our advanced band, we have to get back down to 477. So looking at this, that means we have a lot that's about a 30, almost $40 correction, depending on which one we're trying to save. So I'm gonna go down to our intermediate band first and take a look. Looking at our intermediate band, we see that basically, like we said, that blue line is buried in that danger zone to the deflection zone. But once again, um, if you've watched previous seminars, we can't get a downtrend until we get volatility. Our trend top and trend bottom, as long as they can stay above that blue line, we will keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing because there's no probability to make us actually go down. So, if we suddenly had a large candle to the downside in the near future, or even a large candle to the upside in the very near future, probability could expand, and then the move right after that move could be an actual downtrend. But until then, let's just ride the ride, all right? Uh, since we're on a four-hour time frame, us getting to those uh, numbers that we just mentioned this week are almost slim to none, but it is possible there's about a 42% chance that we can make it down that low. I'm not saying the sky's about to fall. I'm just saying that the odds are very low that that's going to happen this week. 
Uh, I'm going to go down to my 30 minute time frame, which gives us a much nicer, much nicer odds when looking at this to see where it thinks it can go. So basically it says for this week, looks like on our arbitrage band, uh, we should find support somewhere near around 498 with a high somewhere around 514 if things still proceed as they are. Um, we do see that the arbitrage band has started a downtrend on this 30 minute time frame. And on a 30 minute time frame, these trades are usually good for about uh, three to 15 days. So on that arbitrage band, let's go take a look at the arbitrage band on this time frame to see what we're seeing. And we should see, yep, uh, going into the last part of the day, we just broke underneath that RSI line, creating a sell trend that should uh, go into pre-market uh, Sunday um, into Monday morning. Um, we also see on this 30-minute time frame that 505.89 was where it had to reach to basically satisfy the novice band to allow a buy trend to continue from here. And for the Apocalypse Band, that's one of our biggest bands in our system. It still needs to go to 498, which is right about um, sitting right about our trend bottom, letting us know that, hey, hey, we can reach that number. But if we reach that number this week, more than likely, there will be another bounce to the upside. Um, as long as probability can maintain a speed, um, whether it's a uh, fast speed or slow speed, it's still, as long as it can maintain it, it can drift up or down indefinitely. But let's stop beating a dead horse and beating you up with statistics. Let's go take a look um, at the cues. Looking at QQQ, we see that there is a little bit of a topping motion and the same thing is happening on the 30 minute for the cues. We got a little bit down and looks like it still wants to get to about 435.90 before attempting more up. So we're gonna keep our eye on this and see if there's any more of that in the near future. I'm gonna go back to my intermediate band because I wanna see because of where the S&P 500 was, where we are. And because of the giant swoop up, notice that the trend bottom uh, basically swooped up and basically made a B line because of these jump over here. We see the trend bottom make a huge jump over here saying, okay, we lose. It's time to basically get back above that line. As long as it's above the line, we should hold. So I'm expecting that the queue will hold this 431.61 uh, going into the very beginning of this week. Uh, it looks like there's 96% chance that basically can get down to about 428 or up to 443. So that's a little bit of a range to play if you're playing options. Uh, let's go take a look at Tesla. Still looks like a lot of topping and looks like uh, Tesla is taking on some lumps. Um, on this time frame, it's definitely in a sell trend, so much that even the intermediate band, as well as looks like the advanced band just went into a sell trend. Um, looks like there may be a little bit of a pullback because the novice band is sitting at about 64%. Anytime it gets above uh, 70% red or 70% green, it wants to turn around. So 64.58 is a bit much, even for our liking. Um, nothing's in danger. So that means currently it's just in free fall. Can it continue down? Absolutely it can. Basically, the only thing that will stop this guy from rising is if the trend top gets also underneath that blue line. So let's hope that doesn't happen. All right, looking at Mara. Mara, uh, M-A-R-A, -A, is for Marathon uh, Digital Holdings. Typically when Bitcoin goes up, so does Mara. So we're watching this guy and... So far, it went from a hard buy, which about two weeks ago, it went all the way from about a $16 valuation, um, told us to take profit um, at about $27.73. Hopefully, some of us did. That was about a $10 gain on a $17 stock. So no complaints. It went back down. We also saw once we got back over the, uh, the blue line got back over to red, we could ride again. 
some of us did. And that was a valuation of 2564 all the way until it got to about maybe 3070 so another 5 to $6. So once again, not a bad play, a doubling of money in less than 14 days. Who wouldn't like that? But with everything else that happens, good things and bad things do come to an end. In order for the sell trend to continue, however, because from those lofty heights of about $31, we've made it back down to $24. And it's been as low as $22, if I'm not mistaken, $22.67. So from here, where are we going? Well, I do like the fact that the blue line is sitting at the very base of our intermediate band, which means the sell trend, if we get above $24.28 and are able to hold that number, then the sell is officially over and we should see buying beginning. All the trends that are in progress are very, very weak. Anything less than 25% is basically a weak signal for our Z Pro indicator. So things are slowly, subtly switching back to a, a buy trend on this guy, maybe even longer term. We do have a little bit um, to worry about on the front end, though. We do have a little bit of homework to do. Uh, notice that the trend top is has made it above that blue line, which means there is room to get up there. But until that blue that um, trend bottom gets above that blue line, there's no room for anything. It's anybody's game there because it's hugging that line. Either a buy trend or a sell trend could currently succeed this week, and there's no telling with this market. All right, let's go take a look at Nvidia. NVIDIA has done really, really good things and had really, really good earnings, apparently. Um, had an earnings report that made over $103, I believe, on that rise up. And from there, it's just been kind of holding. Uh, well, the question is, where can it go from here? That's another reason why we have this um, dashboard to help us gauge how far it can get. Short term, it's saying there's a short term top out somewhere around 811 based on the five minute chart, 813 based on the 15 minute chart, 831 and 832 based on the 30 minute and the hour chart, and 814 on the four hour chart. So we have about three or four of these guys coming in right about 814, and about three or so of these guys coming in right about 830. So from where we are, um, there's about maybe $30 to $50 worth of more profit in this, but don't get caught in the wrong way on this trade. Once again, breaking below $778 could spell disaster longer term for NVIDIA because that means basically the buy trend is no longer intact. It's definitely in danger if we hit that number. So we want to see if we can hit it and bounce off of it. If we do not bounce off of it, um, expect to, I would guess, uh, decide what you're going to do next with your portfolio, but make sure that you do err on the side of caution when trading in the securities market. And just to be clear, I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. So based on these indicators and these statistics, this is all I can see and talk about. So let's continue on, shall we? Sure. Because NVIDIA went up, also SMCI went up. SMCI is a super microcomputer. Um, it's, based, it's on the NASDAQ. We had a nice Z letting us know that, hey, on the 22nd, we were sitting at about 986. We really should be leaving. And hopefully you did because Friday, it was lumpy. Uh, we lost about $100, $115 per share on this, and it is still falling. So it needs to get back down to about $7.59. It went that far that fast. And because of all of this volatility, um, it's basically made a put the apocalypse man in a really bad spot because at eight at 980 something, 759 was a far cry from anywhere that we want it to be. But the good news is, as this is happening, we see our floor rising on our trend bottom. So seeing that our floor is rising on our trend bottom, this allows us to um, surmise 
that sooner or later, that trend bottom is going to have to have a day of reckoning with that blue line. And either it's going to, we're going to get volatile again, allowing it to expand and get away from it, or it'll shrink and we'll find ourselves in a longer term uptrend. Let's see what the AI and the computers and the microchips can do for us today. All right. Uh, without further ado, let's go take a look at some volatility because I like looking at volatility a whole lot um, because it helps us to determine what's coming or what's not. As you can see, um, February has been all over the place. Um, VIX has been as low as 1282, as high as 17 or 18 dollars, which is where it normally resets, but it's resetting in the 12 to 13 dollar range. So then it went right back down to the $14 range, then back up to the 16 and looks like it's heading back down, which means the market, it looks like it's calming down. And that just means more lumps for those bears who want to see something different. All right. Meanwhile, GE, energy stocks. Um, let's see. GE has been doing very, very well. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have been playing with us uh, for a while. So when this guy uh, did a split, and I want to say the split was somewhere back here. We're on the daily time frame. So it may have been almost a year or so ago that they did the split. I think it's right there, right there. So in 2021, they did a split. And it was a 20 to 1 split, um, I believe, that they did. And let me get over there. Oh, no, sorry, eight to one. It was an eight to one split that they did. And it basically took the price of GE, which was sitting around 12 or $13 back to $100. All right. And then they have the helium uh, or the freelium uh, uh, offering that they have, where basically instead of going to find more helium for MRI machines, they are actually... Um, made a closed circuit so you have a finite amount of helium that you need to run those machines, which greatly reduces the prices of MRIs and helium for that matter, because, hey, don't need nearly as much. So GE is doing really, really well. It's about 153. Um, we're seeing on this chart, however, on the daily time frame, uh, probably sometime this year, it may try to get uh, back down to about 110.03 and then try to make its decision. So right now we're about 40 or so dollars. Is that inflation? Possibly some. Is that it's new products? Possibly some. But just keep your eye on the ball and let's see where it takes us. Also, seeing that all of these guys are literally over 70 percent, don't get hit with lumps. When you see that Z letting you know that it is time to go, that means all the probability on all of my bands in my entire system, <clears throat> which consists of 12 bands, is all out of room. Okay, let's keep on going. Looking at blue. Blue fell from grace, and will blue find grace? It's far, far, far from grace. Um, it needs to get um, back somewhere on even on the map at this point. Things are have been really bloody, but if you saw it when it fell down to about that 107, actually it looks like it got even lower than that. It got down to about 94 cents per share, under a dollar. So it means if you caught this guy at those dollar signs or at that Z that we talked about over here, you had an opportunity to pretty much make a lot of money and it would a very, very little money on the table. Well, hopefully you did. Hopefully you guys saw that basically our top sideways and bottoms went um, up around February the 20th. And the last four days have just been great for blue because, hey, Almost a 25% gain in that duration. Good for you, Blue. You deserve it. Let's go take a look at Amazon. Amazon, 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 up to 174. But they said Bezos was selling. How is the stock continuing to go up? Well, maybe people don't buy the news. 
Um, but looking at this, um, be careful because once again, trend top and trend bottom is what determines where we are in the trend. And even for the compass and momentum line, the moment we see that our trend bottom has trespassed underneath both, that means it's making room to actually begin a downtrend. So please be careful. Don't be caught on the wear. Take your profit or at least, um, I don't know, average down at some point. Um, it's not profit until you take it. All right, let's go continue on. I'm going to go look at AutoZone. Looking at AutoZone, AutoZone basically has been able to stay in this range. So we had all these dollar signs saying, take it, take it, take it, take it, make sure you take it. But we've been able to stay in this range. There was a little bit of a gap down from the Feb from February the 7th to February the 8th. But once again, probability is shrinking. If the green trend bottom can get back above that blue line, there's a good chance that we can see even more green from AutoZone in the very near future. U.S. stocks uh, for U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel, we are just entering that danger and slash deflection zone up in our, in our intermediate band. Those crosses are letting you know that basically you should have taken profit. And if you didn't, shame on you. Um, this was sitting at about um, 2 or $3 higher than where we are. The candles were too far from the blue line. And so consequently, it threw up crosses letting you know that, hey, point of no return, we have to go back. Um, and for U.S. Steel to continue its trek up, it has to get down to 38.25. However, as each time frame weighs in, uh, each one is saying, hey, the bottom should not be all the way at 38. Let's see if we can hold 45, shall we? Okay. Looking at, um, all right, that's enough of these guys, actually. Let's let's move on. Um, looking at crypto, Bitcoin. What do we see on Bitcoin? Is Bitcoin overbought, oversold? Where are we? So Bitcoin had the crosses, went all the way back from 50, uh, from 45-ish, all the way back down to 38, just to say, oh, okay, yeah, we have supports there. Let's not, let's not go crazy. And then it bounced back up. Um, we do see that the blue line is trespassing underneath the red, but the trend top and trend bottom are still above that blue and red line, which means from where we are, there is a good chance that we can continue our ride up longer term. We have support. For Bitcoin, roughly at about 51,000 when all the different time frames chime in. But if we would break 51, then we have more support at about 50 and 380-ish. So, or 50 and 400. So, there's a lot of support on these different time frames for Bitcoin. So, let's see if it can keep and hold roughly 50,000 and see where its top out is. The only thing that I don't like about Bitcoin currently is that its top out is also very near its bottom. So basically volatility has almost shrank to nothing and it just wants to hover between 20, uh, 50 to 500 and uh, 50,000. So about 5% uh, range that it's playing with, but that's not normally enough room to actually make anything sizable for Bitcoin. But what do I know? All right. Ethereum, Ethereum, Ethereum. When we say shoot the works, Ethereum says, yeah, me, sitting at 3,100 today, almost at 100% on the advanced man, sitting at 110% on the apocalypse man, it is time for a correction on Ethereum. This is not sustainable, nor is this recommended. Notice it says at the top, 3,100, 3,100, 3,100, 3,100. 3,100. So this is the absolute top. Let's not miss that, shall we? You remember, you heard it here first. Um, it does have support somewhere around 2,800, though. 
So keep your eye on around 2,800. Let it basically go back to 300 or so. That's about a 10% correction. And then watch out. We might have another opportunity to get it at 10% off. And who doesn't like 10% off? Okay, let's keep on going. Uh, we're going to switch over to Forex because we are running a little bit behind on our time. Um, so here we go. DXY. DXY is trying to maintain its uptrend. It broke over um, going into the 12th of last week. And then it's slowly been drifting, drifting, drifting down. All right. And probability has been drifting down. Nothing is turned on. Nothing is turned off on this time frame. So we're going to have to look at other time frames to see what's going on longer term for this guy. On our, for our time frame, DXY has tripped underneath the immediate band, triggering a sell trend. Um, about uh, Thursday at about 11 or so, I'm sorry, 10 p.m. or so, Central Standard Time. And all it's been doing since then is actually trying to pick itself up. Longer term, where do we have support? That's the main question. It looks like 103.80 is roughly where we have solid support. And um, if it were to gun it, as we say, um, 104.68 or 69 is where we would expect a top on DXY this week. Going back down to my 30 minute time frame, I want to basically, I want to narrow it down and make, make it closer. So looking at this 30 minute time frame, um, it looks like it wants to stay between 103.61 and 104.20 with about 92% certainty. So watch out, Look, keep your eye on the ball. Looks like the arbitrage band is just beginning a new uh, buy trend because it's at sitting at 28% on the Z Pro indicator. So that is a really good thing. But um, these other guys, the longer term time frame is saying, hey, we're red. Don't ignore the fact that we're red. So I'm going to go up to the uh, apocalypse band, see what we see. Apocalypse man, so we are, the trend top and trend bottom are actually underneath this pink line. So just as we said, there is heavy resistance at about 420 um, or 425 on our 30 minute time frame. We need volatility to pick up in order to get us back above that line. And if it doesn't, then basically we will continue to slide. So please keep your eye on your money. Um, this is NZD USD, and it's up, up, and above where we are. And from there, um, we can clearly see that basically NZD USD had a very positive last two weeks. And where will it be going next? Good question. Well, because it was so positive the last two weeks, we have to question how fast is it getting there? We do see that the arbitrage brand is just given the inkling of, hey, maybe I do want to turn. And if it does, um, that means the compass just broke underneath. The RSI line, and it is, but this is a 30 minute time frame. So expect a very bumpy, maybe Sunday going into Monday. Um, but don't expect a lot of fireworks. I At least I wouldn't expect a lot of fireworks going into this. I do see that we have that spooning motion once again, uh, basically where it's curling over or rolling over. Um, and once again, the arbitrage ban on AUD USD is also just starting to begin that trek down. Uh, we have about a 65 pip range that AUD USD wants to stay in. About 65.90 is it 65.355. If it can stay in that range, then basically that's what we're expecting between the now and the next three to 12 days. So if you are able to play the range, go for it. If you want to wait on the sidelines, please feel free. All right. Looking at Euro USD, Euro USD 
also beginning a slight down. And arbitrage ban and novice ban and intermediate ban are actually even automation is saying, hey, the fact that we can't get over 108, 166, um, there's a good chance that we're going to get a little bit of turbulence on Euro USD going into this week. And GBP USD holding out on us yet again. It hasn't actually broken under just yet, but it's just on the edge. Literally less than six pips from actually triggering a new buy, a new sell trend, rather. So keep your eye on the USD pairs, guys. It's going to be lumpy and bumpy. Meanwhile, Japan. What's going on with Japan? Well... Good things, maybe, finally, perhaps. Um, we have our first inkling of a buy trend on JXY um, that began this week. About, uh, I want to say Friday, about 10 in the morning, it started an uptrend on our 30-minute time frame. Um, it says, basically, for the sell to successfully, uh, I guess, give us the slip, it has to get back to 67.27, but not be able to get over it. So that's basically the support or slash resistance that we're trying to get to. If we get up there too quickly, we go back down. If we drift over that number, however, there's a good chance that we can see maybe blue skies in the near future. So what does that mean for the NZD, JPY, AUD, JPY, EUR, JPY, and GBP, JPY? That means they may be getting a little top heavy and may possibly, maybe uh, be coming back down. Look at this ride. I mean, this is gorgantuan from 89 all the way to 93 in the span of that is one month. That is over 400 pips in one direction in one month. So the JPY pairs do not play around. They are out for blood. And if you allow them to take it, a shame on you. Once again, AUD, um, JPY, once again, from the beginning of February, sitting at 96, almost to 99, to almost 300 plus pip return on there. We have dollar signs at least letting us know we should be taking profit. And now the down is starting to begin. Looking at Euro JPY, a little bit of the same thing. Notice a little bit of a downtrend. And basically, it needs to get back down to 162.73 and 161.77. So we have a little bit of oomph that can push us down. But the question is, will we be able to drift past that point to let us continue going now? Only time will tell. And finally, but definitely not the least of our worries... We got GBP, JPY just beginning a new sell trend with a little bit of support at 192.44 and 189.30. And so looking at this on, on this time frame, looks like it's trying to build support right at about 190. But if it can't hold 190, then that 187, 188 area is a good place to try to either catch this guy bouncing or watch to see if it's going to fall. I hope you've enjoyed this. I definitely have. We will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.